Okay, if you have two blocks and a blanket, definitely get those. If not, whatever, we'll figure it out. Um, cool, okay, so we're gonna start on our backs in a fish-like pose. So depending on what you have, uh, you can get as deep or not deep into this as you want. Um, okay, so one option is just putting uh, your block, one of your blocks on your middle height, um, and then just lying down back on it where and find like where your shoulder blades are and have that hit the block and then your head should fall on the floor. If you don't have a block, you can use something that you can roll up. And then place that down and then same thing find where your shoulder blades are and then lie on top of that. Um, if with I'm trying to think. If with the block on its middle height, it feels like too high for your head to hit the floor, you can always put a block on the lowest height under your head if you're using the blocks. So just find whichever thing feels comfortable. Also, if you want like a deeper back bend right away, you can start with a block and then move it off. But we're just immediately trying to get our lungs open, trying to bring our chest a little bit forward. It's been one week of spring, which means we are coming out of our winter caves and getting ready to put some more energy out there into the world. Big change with and the very wintry feelings of staying home, being by yourself, being warm and cozy. Now we're trying to get out there, go for more walks, go outside, get a tan, try and do everything. So get ourselves prepped for all of the energy we'll have in summer. So just notice here, notice where your breath is going. Notice if you're holding any tension in your shoulders. Try to let your shoulders just drop wherever they are. Really try to guide the breath as deep as you can into your low belly so you can breathe in as much air as you can into your lungs. And the way that your arms are kind of draped here too is already giving your armpits a little bit more of an opening so that you can have more space to breathe in your lungs. And your eyes can definitely be closed if they weren't instinctively already. Your legs can even extend out if that also is something you want to try. We'll only be here for like five more breaths. So just count each breath. Notice if you can start to hold tension somewhere again especially in the shoulders or your face. And after you've finished your five breaths, you can gently lift, well, if your legs are straight, you definitely bend your knees again so your feet are planted on the floor. And then you can remove one block, two blocks, or just lift your body up enough just to remove whatever's under you. Place it off to the side. You can do any graceful thing to get everything out of the way. And then once it's off to the side, find yourself in a constructive rest. So feet as wide as the mat, knees are knocking in. Eyes can definitely stay closed. Arms can be on your belly, really feeling the breath. Or arms can be down by your sides. Just noticing already how your back feels. See if you can feel the natural curve of your spine as you're lying here. So there's a little bit of space right at the base of your spine where someone could probably stick a little pencil underneath because there'd be space between your back and the ground. You can windshield wiper your knees from right to left if that feels nice.
Cool. Then on your next inhale, you're going to let both knees just completely fall over to the right side. Whatever that looks like for you, you can just do whatever. Arms can come out into a key, a T or a cactus shape. And then if you feel good here, you can place your right ankle on top of your left knee. Look over your left shoulder. But just twist this way. Eyes can still be closed this whole time. If that feels nice. Still breathing deeply. Try to have both shoulders on the ground, do whatever you're doing. Take one more inhale, one more exhale, and then come back to center. And give yourself a little bit of a mini windshield wiper arms can stay where they are and then let both knees fall over to the left do whatever you did on the other side so if your knees just stayed like that great otherwise you could use your left foot on top of your right knee to help press that right knee to the ground just try to keep the twist only happening in your hips so your shoulders are both still on the ground that goes over your right shoulder Keep breathing. Build up as much space in the lungs as you can. One more cycle of breath. And then come back to center when you're ready. Give yourself a little bit of a rock right to the left with your knees. Hug your hug both knees in towards your chest and just give your knees some circles to the right and the left. You can take some figure eights, whatever feels good. And then let the movement begin to go up and down your spine until you have enough momentum to come over your legs and come into your all fours position. So you can take as long as you need. Oops. Ignore me, I'm turning around. Okay, so once we're here, we've been here probably 500 times in our lives, definitely more. Your hands are going to be underneath your shoulders, your knees are underneath your hips, and then we're immediately going to flip our wrists around 180 degrees. So if you've done this before, if this is too much, just go 90, otherwise flip them around. And then we'll take our cats and cows from here, inhaling as you arch and exhaling as you round. And just keep going at your own pace. You can have that slight bend in your elbows. All 10 toes are pressing down on the floor. Our arms and legs are like two or four legs on a table, holding your torso up like the tabletop. So you're strongly pressing down so that you can be lifted up. And you can go faster, you can go slower here. See if you can switch up your pace. Eyes can be open or closed. Thumb side of your hand is pressing down so you're not sinking in on your pinkies. Pull and take this for 10, at whatever pace you're going, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Flip your hands back around the normal way. Let anything settle that kind of hurt or felt a little weird. Then you're going to come up onto your fingertips. If you have blocks, you can also put your hands on blocks, but try it out and then see what happens. So you're going to bring your right knee. So you're trying to wrap it around your left knee, which you can do so by bringing your knee towards your nose and then crossing it over your left knee. But we're not staying there. And you're going to bring it back up and then lengthen it out back behind you. Find your toes. Come onto the floor to your left side. And then look back at it. And then just bring it back. So you get a nice little side stretch. You're going to cross your knee again. 
bring it up, and then cross back over. Yeah. So if you want to use blocks just to give you a little bit more space for your right knee to move, you can. If your fingertops stop hurting, stop, start hurting, you can always come to the palms of your hands. But we're just going to take this for a bit, getting some mobility in our hips, our right hip actually, so that our right hip can move around, can warm up. We're getting familiar with what it's like to cross our knees. And take one more, wherever you are. And then you can find your right knee next to your left knee. Place the palms of your hands down and just give yourself a little wiggle and roll to just rinse that side out before we go to the other side. Cool. So come back up on fingertips or if you want to try blocks or anything, feel free to switch it up. You're going to bring your left knee towards your nose, cross it over your right knee. Left knee comes back up towards your nose, cross it back over to the right side, look over, side stretch on the left side, and then come back, knee comes to nose, cross it over, and just go at your own pace. We all have a different amount of space in our hips that allow us to move. So then this might be super easy for some of us, but also super hard for some of us. So just keep going. And you can pause also on that side stretch with your leg back because it feels super nice. Looking back at your left foot when you're back there. Shoulders are down and away from the ears. Take one more wherever you are. Cool. And then find your left knee, hip foot distance from your right knee. Move your blocks if you use them. Find your hands planted on the floor. Bring your knees to touch. You know where we're going. Tuck your toes and then sit back on your heels. Okay, cool. So, since we're here, you're going to untuck your pinky toes. Make sure that you're feeling all five toes underneath. So, probably hurt more for some of us that are using our feet more than others. Then you're going to interlace. Interlace your hands at the base of your spine and just pull them away from you so your shoulders come down and back. So we feel that nice slight back bend again, just sitting here. And in everything that we do, there's always a slight back bend because it is not cool for us to sit like this. No one likes that. Don't do that. You want to sit up tall so our shoulders are back and then there's a slight back bend. So from here, you're there. You're going to bring your interlaced hands to the right side of your right hip. And then you can just gently bring your left ear to your left shoulder. So you get a nice side stretch there. You just breathe. You can close your eyes here again and think of something more pleasant than this. Take one more cycle of breath. Come back through center. I know we're here for a long time. Lengthen out your arms. Too bad we have another side. Switch which fingertips are on top. Lengthen them out. And then pull over to the left. Left hands on the left side of your left hip. Right ear, right shoulder. Shoulders roll down your back. Your feet might hurt a lot. This might hurt a lot right now. <laughs> but just laugh it off. Okay. One more breath. Extend your arms back out. Place your hands back down in front of you. Untuck the toes. Try not to shake them if you can and just sit back on them. And then you can grab for your blocks if you have them. Otherwise, you can use fingertips. And then just try to rock like one knee up at a time. So just see what that feels like. Try to keep all five toes pressing down each time on each foot. Shoulders are down and back. If you're using blocks, you might be able to get up a little bit higher. And just keep going for a bit. We were a long time with my toes tucked, so we can even it out. Opening up the fronts and the backs of our ankles. In spring, 
the element from Chinese medicine that's associated with spring is wood. So we can think of our feet and our little wood stumps that are holding us up, allow the rest of our body to grow on top of it. So come back to center, come back to your all fours. If you can spill your feet, great. You're gonna tuck your toes and come to your downward facing dog. Once you're there, pedal it out. I highly recommend shaking a leg and an arm and really just moving it all around. We just did a lot in our legs already. So give it all a little shake. Shaking an arm, shaking a leg. Yeah. Do to do. Singing yourself a little song. Keep going. Take a few more movements. And then gently, gently begin to walk your hands towards your feet and your feet towards your hands. So you end up in a forward fold at the middle of your mat. Once you get there, make sure your head completely drops. And you can grab your opposite elbows. Making a frame for your face. Feet are at hips with distance. All 10 toes pressing evenly on the floor. Head is completely relaxed. Keep giving it a few little shakes if you need to relax it more. Yeah. You can start swaying right to left to give yourself a little bit more movement. Imagine that you're a tree swaying in the wind. Amazing. Grab our other opposite elbow grip. Or opposite, opposite elbow. Tasha's favorite thing. Just continue taking any movements that feel good. You can always try like bending into one leg or twisting. Doesn't have to be super prescriptive. It can be anything that feels good. Taking a few more breaths here. I know this is a lot in your legs. You can test what it's like to bend a little bit more, straighten a little bit more the entire time that you're here. Take one more cycle of breath. Let your arms go. I was about to say, let your legs go, but don't do that. And then begin to walk your hands up to the front of your mat again and walk your feet back so that you're in a plank pose. And wow, planks are made of wood. So perfect for spring. Hands underneath your shoulders. Your legs are super engaged. And then from here, bend your knees and stick your butt up for your downward facing dog. Cool. On your next inhale, you're going to step your right foot to your right thumb. Once again, we're going to do some like alternating things. So if you want to grab your blocks, you can, but you can also just be on your fingertips. Just try it. So you're going to step your left foot behind your right. So that your feet are in the same line, but now you're in a cross-legged forward fold. Then immediately, you're going to step your left foot back, and then you're going to step your right foot across your left, so that you're in a cross-legged down dog. And then you're just going to alternate a few times. Coming through your lunge, stepping back behind you, stepping back with your left, stepping back with your right, crossing. And each time, just really find that the front of your knee kisses the back of your knee and vice versa. And you could even try to stay on your fingertips in your down dog if you want to try that out. And if you have your blocks under you, that's also great. See if you can keep looking forward the whole time so you keep that back bend. Take one more round so that you end in your cross like a down dog. We'll all meet there. Just take a bend in your knees. Then you're gonna lift your left leg up and step your left foot to your left thumb. Surprise, we're doing the other side. You're gonna step your right foot behind your left. Look out in front of you. Step your right foot back. Cross your left leg over your right. Down dog. Step your left foot forward. Yeah. 
just keep going at your own pace. If you want to try going super slow and holding your dog or your forward fold, that's great. Otherwise, go really fast. In the spring, we start to speed things up. Well, take one or two more rounds until we all meet in our down dog, cross-legged. Right knee is crossed over left. Left, right knee, well, left knee is crossed over right, sorry. Right knee is pressing into your left knee. Cool. And then this time, lift your right leg up. And then step your right foot to your right thumb. Cool. What are you doing now? Step your left foot up to meet your right and just come to a normal forward fold at the front of your mat. Let your bodies hang. Give yourself a little wiggle. Imagine you're a willow tree just blowing through the wind. Shake your head, yes and no. Gently, gently, gently begin to stack yourself up to come up to stand like you're stacking Jenga block on top of Jenga block. And once you get to the top, just gonna give your shoulders and everything a little wiggle. Find your feet planted underneath your hips. And we're gonna do water salutations, which I think all three of you have done before. But everything you just did was basically that, but not. So you'll see. So get ready. Listen to my voice. If you want to go at your own pace because you know this, feel free. And if you get confused, just keep moving back and forth. So inhale, lift the arms up, press palms together overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, step your right foot back. Keep your right toes tucked. Place your knees down. Lift your chest up. Place your hands back down, lift your back knee, cross your left knee over your right, come into your cross-legged down dog. Roll your body forward and through, cross-legged up dog, cross-legged down dog. Step your right foot to your right thumb or in between your hands, place your back knee down, lift your chest up, place your hands back down, lift your back knee, cross your left behind your right, inhale, look out, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, palms come together, Lift it up, bring them to a V, bring your hands back to center. Other side. Inhale, lift up, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, step the left foot back, place your back knee down, lift your chest up. Hands come down, right knee crosses over left, down dog. Roll your body forward and through, up dog, back to your down dog. Left foot in between your left, in between hands, place your back knee down. Lift your chest up. It's okay if you wobble. Hands come down. Step your right foot behind your left. Inhale, extend your spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, hands come through center. Open up into a V. Exhale, come back to your chest. Inhale, other side. Exhale, forward fold. Step your right foot back. Bring your knee down. Lift your chest up. Hands come down. Cross your left in front of your right. Up dog. Back to your down dog. Step your right foot in between your hands. Place your knee down. Chest comes up. Hands come down. Left foot comes behind right. Forward fold. Inhale, bring your arms up. Open up like a flower in spring. Hands come back to center. Again, arms come up. Exhale, forward fold. Step your left foot back. Place your knee down. Chest comes up, hands come down. Cross your right over your left. Up dog, down dog. Left foot comes in between your hands. Back knee comes down. Chest comes up, hands come down. Right foot comes behind your left. Hands come together. You lift up and you bloom and you come back down. Last round, inhale, come up. Exhale, forward fold. Step your right foot back, knee comes down, chest comes up. Hands come down, step your left foot across your right, down dog, come to your up dog, and back to your down dog. Step your right foot forward, 
Knee comes back down, chest comes up, hands come down, left leg crosses back behind your right, send your spine, forward fold, bring your hands up through center, open up in spring, hands come back to your chest. Breathe for a second with your legs crossed. Woo! And then uncross your legs. Find yourself back in your normal feet together. Give yourself a little wiggle. Feel free to close your eyes as you're standing here just to see what that feels like for a moment. And inhale, bring your arms up again. Exhale, forward fold. Set yourself back or hop to your downward facing dog. Once you're there, knees come as wide as your mat. Keep your toes tucked under, and then you can pull both sides of your mat to really extend your spine and get a nice stretch in your feet as you are in this child's pose. So forehead can still come to the ground. We're trying to rip the mat apart a little bit. Yeah, so you're grabbing the edges of your mat and pulling them away from each other or forward. Yeah, nice. Beautiful. Noticing how all that flowy movement feels. Noticing how your breath is moving when you feel like it's moving like a flowing river through your body. It's okay if it doesn't. Awesome. One more cycle of breath. And then when you're ready, come back into your downward facing dog. Cool. So let's formalize our dog for a second, just because I know we've moved through it a lot. Your hands are pressing down, your arms are wrapping in towards your heart. Your all 10 toes and the balls of your feet are pressing down. Knees are slightly bent, blood is sticking up. Head is relaxed, and there's no wrinkles that you can see at your ankles. So everything is elongated. On your next inhale, lift your right leg up, down dog split. Exhale, step your right foot to your right foot. If you have a block, I recommend grabbing it and placing it on the highest height outside of your right foot. You can also use one of the weights you have less if you want to get yeah, nice. Vertical that. Then you're going to Place the whole sole of your left foot on the ground so that your toes are facing up towards your diagonal. You're going to begin to straighten into your right leg and come into your triangle pose. Beautiful. So shoulders are stacked on top of one another. You have weight pressing down to the front of the right foot and the back of the left foot. You can gaze up at your left thumb, out in front of you or down to your right foot. Whatever feels good with your balance today. And we're just going to stay here for a little bit, just feeling super solid in our triangle. Triangle is one of the most stable shapes in geometry. And really find the weight in your legs. Take one more breath. As you exhale, imagine someone's pulling your left fingertips up, 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 and back so that they land at the back of your left leg. And you can bring your right arm up and over so you're making like an arc in this direction. Yeah, nice. Facing up underneath your armpit. One more cycle of breath. Turn your right toes in so they're facing the long edge of your mat. Make your left toes do the same. And then keep reaching over, over, over until you come into your wide legged forward fold. Yeah. You can just shake everything around once you get here. Let your head shake. Knees can be slightly bent. Doesn't need to be the most crazy wide legged forward fold. And most times in our forward folds, you should be able to touch the opposite ankle with your hand. Then you know you're measured out with the geometry of your body. So you can test that out. So if I try to touch my right ankle with my left hand and my left ankle with my right hand, I can touch them. If you can't touch them, bring your legs together so that you can touch them. And just take a few more breaths. 
You can walk your fingertips out a little bit in front of you as if you're in a down dog with your arms. Letting your spine completely extend. Yeah. Keeping the weight on all parts of your feet so that if you lifted your hands up, you wouldn't fall. So try that. Yeah, nice. Cool. Take one more cycle of breath. Then continue walking your hands all the way up and over, 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 over to the left until you're in a lunge on your left side. And we're going to come straight back into that triangle so you know what we're doing. Grab your block or whatever you need to grab. Spin the whole sole of the right foot down. Toes are at that 45 degree angle. Pressing down with your legs, reaching up to the sky. Twisting to the right. Inhaling and exhaling still. Pressing down with all parts of both feet. Feeling super anchored in your back foot, but also super strong in the front of the left foot. Shoulders are down and back. Fingers are reaching up towards the sky. One more inhale. And as you exhale, someone's pulling your fingertips up, 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 and over until your left hand replaces where you just were, and now you're arcing back. So you're feeling that really nice long side body stretch, kind of like we did, like when we did those little arc things with our legs in the beginning. I don't know the technical term for those, but you know what I mean. Take one more cycle of breath. See if you can reach a little bit more. And then keep turning to the right toes, both face the long edges of your mat, and then forward fold over your legs again. Right away from here, you're going to find your left fingertips underneath your face. We've done this before. We're going to go swimming. As you inhale, you're going to lift your right arm up, just back behind you. Exhale, forward fold, or swim your arm forward. Inhale, lift your left arm up, open to the side. Exhale, swim your left arm forward. Really imagine that you're leaning over something as you take these swims. So you keep that back bend for the idea of the back bend each time. Yeah. You can follow your hand each time that you swim. Getting that mobility in your shoulders. Just keep swimming, as Jordan would say. Take one more to your right and left sides. And then you'll just let your arms dangle, hang over. Take a deep inhale. Take a deep exhale. Really drop your head, Maddie, and let your, yeah, beautiful. And then walk your hands up and over to the right, you're back in your right line, and find yourself in your downward facing dog. From there, let's take a normal up dog because we haven't done that yet. So roll your body forward and through, keeping your toes tucked, come to your up dog, and then bend the knees and stick your butt up back to your downward facing dog. Take that two more times, just rolling through like a wave. And then after you finish your third, we'll stay in your down dog for one cycle of breath. And on your next inhale, you're going to lift your right leg up, down dog split. Exhale, step your right foot to your left thumb. Cool. So now it's like our toes and our feet are kind of in the same line, but they won't be for long. You're going to take some bounces or bends with your back knee, then immediately just step your right left knee to the right side of your right foot. So find yourself seated on the floor. If you don't feel both sits bones pressing strongly down into the floor, you can always grab your blanket or whatever you used in the beginning for the fish thing and sit up on it so that you have two strong points pressing down. Yeah. Once you're there, 
right fingertips come behind you, left arm reaches up, left elbow comes up outside right knee, and you twist to the right. Ooh. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. You can look over your shoulder again, see what's going on behind you. It might be something exciting, there might be nothing at all. Just notice. Shoulders are down and away. Both sides of your foot are pressing down. And as you exhale, you'll come back to your center. Spin over to the other side. Then you'll lengthen out your right leg and then pull your left one in so that you find yourself in a tree pose on the ground. So you can sit up on this blanket still if that feels good. I'm going to stay on the blanket because I like it. And then from here, you'll just sit up super tall, stay facing over your right leg. Your right leg can have a little bend in it, and then you're going to forward fold over your left. If you can grab for your foot, cool. If not, just go as far as you can go, then your back stays super long, and then you can let your head drop. You can give your toes a little wiggle. And you can circle your head to the right and left and even give your neck a little bit of a nice little wiggle stretch thing. Maybe your feet a little more grass. You can rock your body from right to left. As you exhale, begin to walk yourself back up. Lengthen out your left leg. Give your legs a little shake. Move your blanket if you were using it. Just cross simply right over left and come back into your downward facing dog. If you want to take an up dog to a down dog, you can. Anything is good. On your next inhale, lift your left leg up. Step your left leg to your right thumb. Finding that cross, pull your left hip back just for a second. Get bend in that back knee, and then step your right knee to the outside of your left foot. You can use the blanket if you feel that you need it on this side. Both sides are different, so one side might be a lot easier than the other. Left fingertips come behind you, right arm comes up, elbow outside of the knee, twist to the left. See if you can gaze over your left shoulder. You can yawn. Shoulders down and back. Really feel like everything twists up. So that on your next exhale, you can open and then twist to the right. On the twist. Come back through center. Lengthen out the left leg. Right foot comes into left thighs if you're in a tree pose on the ground. Torso is right up on top or right above your left leg, and then walk yourself forward. On one side, it might be easier to walk forward on. It's probably because one part of your side body is open a little bit more. On my right side body is more open, so I have more space to come forward this way. My left side body is a little bit tighter, so it's harder for me to go down on the other side than this side. So it's just information that can then inspire you and what to do instead. So I should work on my left side body stretching as I go back to the can Shake your head around the bag, everything, shake your foot. One more cycle of breath. Walk yourself back 
up, move the blanket if you used it, shake out both legs. This time, cross left shin over right and come back into your down dog. Okay. Once again, you're going to find your hands, come to your feet, feet come to your hands. Find that forward fold in the middle of your mat. Let everything completely drop. Just for a second. Bring in to roll your body up to stand, stacking jungle block on top of jungle block. Bring up the feet or the wooden items. Then once you get to the top, you'll shake it out. So it wouldn't be a spring or wood beam class without a tree pose. So you're going to find your hands on your hips. Weight's going to come into your left foot. Without using your hands, see how far you can bring your right knee up and then where it goes on your leg. Where do you place it? Nice. Good job, guys. Just make sure it's not on your knee. So I'm going to move mine up a little bit. You can move yours up or down. Then once you're there, find your gaze, find your balance, pressing down strongly with the left foot and the left leg. Hands can come to prayer. Hands can come up overhead. Hands can come to a V. Hands can come to secret prayer. That's in your practice. And you can even close your eyes. So you might fall if you try to close your eyes, but it's very interesting to close your eyes in a balance. Because losing one sense makes it a lot harder to balance. Take three more breaths wherever you are. Noticing what's happening. And once you finish your third breath, you'll lift your knee up. You'll extend it out, you'll place it to the ground, and you'll give yourself a little shake. Cool. Weight coming into the right foot. You know what worked for you on the other side, so just get yourself into it. Try not to use your hands to initially place your left foot. Mine always goes to my knee, so I'm going to use my hands to lift it up. You can also already sense which side might be a little bit more wobbly than the other. But foot presses on leg, camping up the prayer. It can be up in the V, secret prayer. You can keep on your hips, whatever feels good. Pressing down with all sides of your right foot to lift up. So you're rooting down to rise up. You can try closing your eyes here also and just see what happens. Always good to fall. And you try something new. Falling safely, of course. Take three more breaths. Once you finish your third breath, you lift your left knee up, lengthen your left leg, place it down, shake it up. Last standing thing, I think. So give yourself a little wiggle. Inhale, arms up, exhale, forward fold, come back into your downward facing dog. This time, Inhale, lift your right leg up, bend the knee, open up the hip. You know where we're going, where we're going to pigeon. So take some wiggles in your ankles, feet, B. And then bring your right knee behind your right wrist. Then definitely use a blanket or whatever you have underneath your hips, regardless of how flexible you are. So just take something, place it under there. If you have blocks, you can place one diagonally in front of your shin, one horizontal so it's aligned with the mat, and then you can walk yourself down within your blocks. If you don't have blocks, you can just walk yourself down with one in your left.
Just breathe in here. Lifting up our hips in this pigeon. Letting everything release here. You shouldn't be putting in any effort. You should be letting the body just melt to the ground because of gravity. Which is why we give ourselves a little bit of a leg up underneath us. And we have some more space. Take one more cycle of breath. and bring yourself back up when you're ready. You're gonna sit to your right hip, the side of your right hip. You're gonna swing your left leg around and we're gonna take a double pigeon. So you're gonna find your left ankle right on top of your right knee. Your right ankle is right under your left knee. I always sit on something for this because it just gives me that little slope and then I keep my back super long and straight so I'm not sitting back like this. So you don't like sitting like this. If you look like how I'm sitting, change it. Thank you. Okay. From here, you're gonna find your left elbow in your left foot. Make a fist with your left hand, and then you're gonna twist to the side. If that feels super weird, you can find a block on the outside of your left foot and then also try twisting. That's a little bit harder for me, but all of this is hard. So just do what you can. See if you can twist up to the sky. Take a few more breaths. Pressing down with both hips. Take one more inhale. One more exhale, and then bring yourself back to center. Without using your hands again, you're gonna swing your left leg back around to come through pigeon. Hands come down in front of you, and then come back to your downward facing dog. Oh. Take an up dog and a down dog if you want to, or you can just wiggle yourself around. When you're ready, you'll lift your left leg up down bump slant, bend the knee, open up the hip. Take some circles with your knee and your ankle. Whatever feels good. And when you're ready, you'll bring your left knee behind your left wrist. Set yourself up. Make the blanket or whatever you have as thick as you need to be under you. And then if you have blocks, you can use them. And you can extend out whenever you're ready. Extend being the key word when we try to lengthen your spine out so you can create as much space as possible between each vertebra of your spine. Okay. Coming back to your breath, really deep inhales and exhales. Turn your hips melt towards the floor. One more cycle of breath. As you exhale, begin to walk your hands back up. You'll sit on your left side, spin your leg around, come into that double pigeon or ankle to knee. So ankles on top of each knee. 
sitting up on whatever you're sitting on. So both, excuse me, sits bones are pressing down, sitting up super tall, right elbow, right arch of your foot, your right hands in a fist, wrap your fist with your left hand and twist. Let's see if you can lean back a little bit. Yeah. Twisting up to the sky. I'm going to say what this does to your right hip. It kind of helps guide your right hip or right knee more towards your left foot, which then gives you more of a stretch in your right foot. Take one more inhale, one more exhale. Come back through center. Give it all a wiggle. Here, wiggle out your arms, I guess. And then swim, spin, move <laughs> your right leg back behind you to your pigeon to then place your hands down and come to your last down dog. Cuddling it out. Whenever you're ready, you're going to place both knees down. Come sit up on your shins for a second. And then you have options for whether what you want to do to end. So you can. End how we started. If you want to end in a fish pose and maybe a gentler version of what we did in the beginning, you can do that. You can roll up the blanket and place it underneath your knees. You can also place it at the base of your spine instead of upper spine. You could even place the blanket against the wall and do legs up the wall. You can do Supta Nasana if that means something to you. So choose your own adventure of rest. Um, you could even take a uh, restorative bridge pose if you wanted to put the blocks underneath the low back. I think I named uh, 10 yoga poses that we could have just done a one hour class with. Yeah, find what feels the most comfortable to rest in. Set yourself up super well. Fidget yourself into comfort. And then you'll get to rest for like five full minutes, which is a gift. Let everything become super, super soft. Really begin to follow your breath even more than you were before. Using your breath to stay in this moment, passing through each breath. Letting any sounds come through and just pass through. Letting any thoughts come through and pass through. Let everything be really soft. As we think about coming out of winter into spring, we think of winter sometimes as like a hibernation of ourselves inside. Now we get to begin to come out of the hibernation, crack open our shell, maybe be a little different than we were before winter. Winter doesn't just, winter and spring don't have to just be related to the calendar years of the seasons. But you can find the winter and spring elements in probably everything that you do every day. Whether it's something at work or something in a relationship, a friendship, a book, anything you can find. Maybe the wintry element is really sitting down and thinking about something. Once you've sat there, you would come up with your idea. That's a little spring moment. You take action on your idea, which maps to summer. And then you see what happens and you feel the effects of your idea, which maps to fall and then you can start all over again. So the seasons are with us in all of these different parts. 
of our lives, not just the seasons of the earth. But it is natural that some of these things that have been happen in line with the seasons of the earth because we all live on earth. So begin to think about these little ideas that are sprouting as we are in the first few weeks of spring. And see if you can spot where they're coming from, where they are in your life. And just keep breathing. And all else fails, keep breathing. Begin to deepen your breath. Notice how heavy your body is pressing against the floor. And then begin to take some wiggles in your fingers and your toes and let the movement travel up your body until it's enough to flip you over onto your right side to come into a fetal position. Take a moment here, take a really big deep breath, breathing deep into the back body. So trying to fill up all the back parts of your lungs with breath. when you're ready, you'll press yourself up to sit, keeping your eyes closed, your gaze super soft towards the floor. Hands can come face up on your shins or your, not shins, your thighs, your knees. If you're sitting in Virasana or cross-legged, we like our palms face up because it's a new season, new day, new hour. for a sense of being open and available to what's to come. All of our brilliant ideas that are gonna to come to us in spring. And just listen to your breath again as you sit here. We'll bring our palms to press at the center of our chest. Giving each other a little bit of gratitude for showing up today. More importantly, giving yourselves a bit of gratitude for putting in the effort and the work. We'll bring our thumb knuckles up at their right center. And we'll end with a final bow honoring the practice. Thank you all. Yay.